Hey everybody, Jilly here from Baby Sleep Made Simple. It is now Thursday, our third live call this week. This is getting to be fun. I think so, although all day long I thought it was Friday. My daughter thought it was Friday, so we're just generally still confused over here, still uh, having a f interesting, slightly funky week, but we're doing good. Um, I've got little guy here, so he'll probably make a, a grand entrance in about 37 seconds. Um, but I hope you all are well. I hope you're healthy and safe. Um, and I'm here to help with your baby or toddler's sleep. So you can ask any questions. It's still sort of like a, an open Q&A today. Although my post today on social media was about how to transition from co-sleeping to the crib. So if you have any specific questions on that, definitely drop them here in the comments. Um, this has been a pretty frequently asked question that I get both just with my clients, but then also recently when I'm asking you guys, like, what do you want to know more about? A lot of you say, I want to transition out of co-sleeping. So I really have to kind of divide my advice into two groups, uh, babies and young toddlers who are going to transition to a crib and then older toddlers, um, and kids who really and truly are going to get transitioned to a toddler crib. It can be really hard to try to get like a two year old or a two and a half year old to go from co-sleeping like they've been co-sleeping their whole life um, into a crib and it probably doesn't last very long. So my post today was for little ones who were 18 months and younger and who the goal is for them to get into the crib, fall asleep there and sleep there all night long. So let's see. I don't think we have any questions yet. Okay. Oh, do we? Hey Lauren. Okay, cool. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll just show you guys because you know I love to do this. Why do I have three of them? Is that it? No, that's not it. Is that it? No, that's it. <laughs> the other ones were for my Instagram stories. So this is the little, I wish I could move my face, but this is the graphic from today. So it's from co-sleeping to the crib for 18 months or younger. So there's basically two ways you can do this. You can cold turkey it, or you can choose a gradual method where you do it one step at a time. Cold turkey means that my little one co-sleeps with me for the majority of the night. Maybe they start off in the crib, but they end up in the crib with me or they're in the bed with me. I hope they're not in the crib with you. I've had some parents tell me before, I got in the crib with my little one. Don't do that. <laughs> but if your little one is used to spending the majority of the night in bed with you, um, this is who I'm referring to. So you have the quick method where you just do everything at once. So you already decided on a sleep training method that you're gonna use to get your little one sleeping independently and sleeping through the night. And on night one, you go from co-sleeping on, let's say, a Thursday night, but on Friday night, you do your bedtime routine, you put your little one in the crib awake um, at bedtime, and you use your sleep training steps to get them to learn to fall asleep on their own in the crib. And you use the exact same steps during the night. As you can imagine, this results in quicker um, results, basically. Uh, little ones get adjusted to the crib more quickly and sleeping through the night more quickly, depending on the method they choose. Uh, it does come usually with a bit of resistance, um, a bit of tears. And so it can be a godsend for some parents whose babies have become mobile. So they're rolling, they're sitting up and co-sleeping has now become a safety risk. You know, if you've ever slept with your baby and you wake up in the middle of the night and like they are way down the bed and you had no idea, you know, it isn't safe for our little ones to be unsupervised. Um, if they're anywhere outside of the crib at night. So if you're sleeping, you can't supervise them, even if you're sharing a bed. So this could be a godsend for parents who are really scared um, and who need to get the little ones out of their bed or parents that are just looking for a quick option. Um, the gradual method is where you do it in stages. So what you do is you're used to sleeping, to your baby all, sleeping with your baby all night long in your bed like this. Every time they fall asleep, you're just gonna scoot like one or two feet away from them in your bed, depending on how, bed your bed, how big your bed is. I am tongue tied today depending on how big your bed is. So they'll fall asleep, maybe probably by nursing or cuddling, and then you'll scoot one or two feet away and you'll sleep there. If they wake up two hours later, you comfort them as you normally do. And once they're asleep, you scoot away. And the idea is they're just getting used to sleeping with some space around them. They're getting used to sleeping and not having to touch you. And this is really, really subtle, but this can make a big difference from going like, if you're gonna go like sleeping like this all night to the crib, that's a pretty drastic change. But if you're gonna go just one or two feet away, baby can still like sense you and smell you, but is used to sleeping without having to touch you. This is, this is a, a it's subtle yet it's um, effective. So you do this for about two nights. 
I mean, you can do it as slow as you want, but in general, if you want to see results fairly quickly, you can do it for two nights. And, and step two, you put the crib, or you could use a pack and play travel crib next to your bed and place baby there once they're already asleep. So now they have their own separate sleep space, a crib, a pack and play, baby Bjorn travel crib, whatever it is. And you're going to get your baby to sleep the normal way. So still lying in your bed, maybe nursing to sleep. <clears throat> and as soon as they're asleep in a deep sleep, which usually is about 15 to 20 minutes after they fall asleep, then you're going to gently ninja them into their own sleep space. Let's just say it's the crib. And it can be right up next to your side of the bed. If they wake in the night, you comfort them as usual. And every time your aim is to get them back in the crib. Obviously the first night or two, they may wake up when you put them in the crib a few times, or they may sleep in the crib for three hours. But then after that three hour waking, they're really upset and it's hard to get them back into the crib. That's okay. Any time spent in the crib is progress, okay? So don't say I have to have them in there 12 hours tonight and I'm a failure if I don't. It's like, no, let's go, let's have a goal of one hour in their crib tonight, two hours the next night, three hours the next night. You can go as slowly as you want and always focus on the small wins. The third step is just to take their crib and just push it a little bit farther away from your bed. Put it at the foot of your bed, put it in the corner of the room. <laughs> Yeah, you don't like that idea, do you? No, you don't. And so again, we're just creating a little bit more distance between you and your baby while you sleep. And then the last step is to begin sleep training. So now we're going to focus on putting them in the crib when they're awake and teaching them how to settle themselves to sleep and sleep through the night in the crib. And you have to do this step because if you don't, then more than likely your little one's going to end up in your bed at some point every night whether it's at midnight, whether it's at 4 a.m. or 5 a.m., just depends on the situation. But if you've already decided you'd like them to be sleeping in a crib and you're committed to it, you may as well go ahead and do all the steps to get them sleeping independently in the crib. Now, step four, when you begin sleep training, can be in your bedroom or it can be in their own bedroom, whatever you prefer. Um, it is totally possible to get little ones sleeping well in a crib while room sharing with parents. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is the overall. This is just like a general guide of the two options and kind of what they look like. So if you guys have any questions about transitioning out of co-sleeping or just anything in general, I'm here for you, me and my little guy, as long as he is cool and happy. Daddy is still renovating the garden. It's going to take a while. Um, my daughter's talking to her grandma on FaceTime. I've got little dude, so <laughs> as long as he's happy. We can still hang out. Okay, first question is from Amber. I co-sleep with my seven month old who nurses all night. I wanna keep one night feeding for my milk supply. Suggestions, yes, well do you wanna stop co-sleeping or do you wanna to continue to co-sleep but wean night feedings? So I have a weaning night feeding guide on my website, Amber. You can go check that out, babysleepmadesimple.com and you can just do a search for weaning night feedings. And that walks you through um, several ways to either wean off or reduce night feeds. What I normally recommend for someone who wants to get to one night feeding is to aim for that feeding to be in the middle of the night because that makes the most sense. If your baby has a 12 hour night, then the feed should be about midway through their night, so like six hours. We don't wake our baby to feed them and we don't do a dream feed at the six hour mark. But what we do is if they wake up at any point before the six hour mark, we don't feed them. It depends on the approach you're taking. If you're sleep training, you would use your sleep training steps for any wakings before they're due to feed. If you're not yet sleep training, then you would just comfort them to sleep in another way, holding, you know, rocking, cuddling, whatever it took. And then at any point, if they woke up at the six hour mark or later in the night, then you could feed them. Um, if they woke up again before morning, then you wouldn't feed them. You would again comfort them to sleep or do your sleep training steps. So that's kind of how we do it. You can go super slow with this weaning down to one feed. You can go quickly. As you can imagine, you can tailor it to your preferences and to your little one. So that's kind of a very general um, explanation of how you can wean down to one feed. If you want to also transition out of co-sleeping, you can do that as well. I mean... If you're gonna begin sleep training and you wanna get your little one sleeping in the crib but you wanna hold on to one night feeding, I would do it all together. So you don't have to do the quick method on this um, graphic for instance, but when you got them in the crib um, at some point, like on step four for the gradual method, then I would go ahead and start with the weaning as well. And what's really cool is sleep training and night weaning often go hand in hand. So like I mentioned before, if they wake up before they're due for a feed, you use your sleep training steps to get them back to sleep. So it's like, it solves two objectives. You're weaning them down on their night feeds and you're also teaching them to sleep independently. And it goes a lot easier because once they get a hang of independent sleep, they sleep longer stretches. So I hope that made sense depending on what exactly you wanted, but you can check out my weaning night feeding guide for sure. And good luck to you. 
Holly. My little one is five months and wakes at least four times at night. The only way I can get her back to sleep is by lying down and breastfeeding her. Yeah, so what I would say for you, Holly, is first of all, I have a sleep training guide for five month olds. And what's cool about the five month old age, not only is my little guy five months old, he's like, the light is like hitting his hand. So he's doing this sort of like contemplative <laughs> movement. Um, I have a five month old. Um, so anyway, the good thing is that it is the sweetest age, but also at five months, the good news is our little ones can learn to start settling themselves to sleep. And when they do that, they can also learn to resettle themselves at night when they wake up. So your four night feedings or more, let's say four or five night feedings, can really get dropped down to two night feedings or even one, um, depending on your little guy's situation. So what I would say is check out my five-month-old sleep training guide. Start following the steps from that, and you can certainly welcome to start encouraging them to settle themselves to sleep. Sorry if you guys hear some more banging and power drills and stuff in my husband's store renovating the garden. If you didn't, if you weren't here yesterday, then you may go like, what's that noise? Because he was also renovating yesterday and the day before, and he will be renovating next week as well. So yeah, Holly, I would say there is light at the end of the tunnel. Um, at five months, our little ones can learn to fall asleep in a way other than lying down and nursing together. I promise you it can happen. So check out my five month old sleep guide, and then let me know if you have any questions about that. Um, we can check about independent sleep. Be adventurous. I've tried the gentler method with no success. Should I try to nap first, then sleep at night, then nap? Also, I'm confused with independent sleeping and how to go about it. Um, should I try to nap first, then sleep, then nap? Ah, so do you mean try to get them sleeping in the crib for the nap? I mean, I do get asked this. Generally, if you have a little one who's never slept in the crib, like recently, so hasn't slept in the crib consistently for several, several weeks or several months. It doesn't matter what they did when they were a newborn. If it's been many weeks in a row or many months in a row and they kind of don't even remember what the crib is and you're wondering, should I start the transition to the crib during the day or during the night? I mean, the answer is really up to you, but I always prefer to make changes to little one sleep habits at bedtime. Um, as we talk about all the time, you know, your little one is the most tired at bedtime of the whole 24 hour day. And they're the most likely to comply to changes in their sleep routines and sleep habits. So we wanna use this to our advantage. So I would do bedtime. Bedtime is also a time of the day where you have more energy. You have way more energy than you do at 3 a.m. or any other time during the night. And naps, you know, one could argue you have more energy there and that is true. But if nap training basically is a little bit trickier and we only work on naps for an hour. So what if your little one rejects the crib and, and then you've also missed a nap in addition to being really, really frustrated. So I would actually just start at bedtime. That's what I always recommend. Some parents do start with naps because they're not in the room with their little one and they really want to make sure that their naps are in a safe space. So you could also do that. Um, I'm confused about independent sleeping and how to go about it. I mean, that's basically sleep training, the adventurous. So it depends. It depends on your little one's age and temperament, your parenting style, how quickly you want to see results. Um, this is what I walk parents through in my program, 21 Days to Peace and Quiet. So our whole lesson, the last lesson, is helping you pick a sleep training method that's best for your situation. And then I have step-by-step -step guides that walk you through it. So we have four step-by-step -step guides. Three of them you stay with your little one as you teach them to sleep well. One of them you pop in and out of the room. So, I mean, it, it you know, how to go about it, it's kind of more than I can answer just in like one or two minutes. It really depends. But we would love to have you join us if your little one is five months or older, because um, we can definitely get them sleeping independently. Holly, how can I get her to sleep without relying on me? Yes, okay, I think I answered that question. Let me know if I didn't. Oh, Courtney, just to let you know that my son finally slept all night. Yay, that's amazing. That's so awesome. How good do you feel? Oh. Okay, be adventurous. I have an eight month old who uses me as a pacifier throughout the night and wakes two to four times at night. So at eight months old, we know your little one can sleep independently, 100%. You just have to show her how. And if you're confused or overwhelmed or you don't know where to start, then you can definitely join us in 21 Days Peace and Quiet. I'll walk you through it all. But at eight months, your little one can definitely learn to sleep with just one night feed or maybe even sleep through the night. If you want, you could get in touch with our doctor today and say, you know, what do you think about weaning off night feeds? Can my little one um, handle it given their um, growth and weight gain? Because your doctor knows your baby personally. And once they give you a, yep, that's cool, then go for it. Good question. Uh, 
says Patkin, what do you mean by sleep training steps? That's great, great question. Sleep training steps means whatever method that you've chosen to sleep train your little one. And by sleep training, I mean teaching him to sleep independently. So going into the crib awake and learning how to fall asleep without direct help from parents. So many of you have heard about extinction. Um, you've heard about the Ferber method or controlled crying. You've probably heard of like the chair method or camping out. Maybe you've heard of pick up, put down or shush pad. All of these different sleep training methods. The sleep lady shuffle, no cry sleep solution. Like there's you know, tons of them. These are all sleep training methods. They just differ with how much hands-on um, help you give your little one in the beginning. Um, whether you're present or not, this is how they differ. And all of these methods do work, but parents have to be consistent in order to see results. And I find that it's best if we try to pick a method that's best suited for your little one's age and for their temperament and energy levels. You know, super adaptable, um, sort of laid back babies can handle one method while really energetic, strong-willed, determined babies might need a different method versus really sensitive babies who are quite clingy um, and affectionate, they need a different method. So it dip so my sleep training steps means if you decide, okay, the Ferber method is the one for me, um, then that would be, you know, how long you stay in the room, when do you leave, how long do you stay out, a clear plan. Anytime you're gonna make changes to your little one's sleep habits, you should always have a clear plan to follow because it can be overwhelming. You're gonna second guess yourself. You're gonna second guess why you're even doing this. So have, deciding all this before and having a clear step-by-step -step plan increases your chances of success so much because it's just right in front of you. You've already noticed what you wanna do so you don't second guess yourself. You just stick to the steps. So that's what I mean. Um, I hope that that helps. Yeah, grr, grr, grr. Can a three month old do this? Yes, yeah, they can do this. You may not begin official sleep training. You may not go to the part where you're encouraging them to sleep completely independently because they are a little bit young, but you can certainly work on the gradual method. So you can certainly put some distance between you for a few nights and then work on getting them sleeping the majority of the night in their crib or in a travel crib next to your bed. And if you do this now, then by the time they're old enough to learn to sleep more independently in just basically two months, you've already given them a new sleep space and it's just like you're ahead of the game in that aspect. So you could certainly do the gradual method for sure. Oh good, be adventurous. I'm starting your exhausted mom survival kit. I have 12, I work 12 hour shifts but I have five days off in a row. Oh well good, you need your five days off. Do the survival kit, because here's what's cool about the survival kit. I just updated it and my program last summer. And so the first three methods of my program um, are in the exhausted mom survival kit. It's the exact same lesson. I wanted to like give you the beginning, get you set up so you could see results. Instead of saying, hey, I have this cool program, you should buy it. And people will be like, well, I don't know, is it gonna work? So the first three lessons are the survival kit. So start it, it's baby steps that you can do every day. If you kind of want to move through it quickly because you have five days off, normally I say to give each lesson like two days, but you can kind of do one lesson each day if you would like to see some good results in your five days off. And if anyone else wants to get the Exhausted Mom Survival Kit, you can click the link in my bio here on Instagram and there's a link to it. Liana says, hello, I breastfeed while laying down in bed at night. She eats and turns around to settle herself back to sleep right away. How do I handle night feedings when I move her to the crib? She's six months. Well, once you've decided to move her to the crib and you want her sleeping in the crib all night, then I recommend that you do not do any more um, breastfeeding sessions lying down with your baby. Can any of you guess why? I'm gonna hand him his little toy while you think about it. <laughs> Because you're gonna fall asleep, that's the answer. If it's 2 a.m. and you pull your baby in the bed and you say, oh, let me just feed you. I'm sorry, guys, I'm getting comfy. I mean, I'm still sort of in comfy pants. Um, if you pull your baby in the bed at 2 a.m. and you lay down and you say, oh, I'm, I definitely, I'm definitely not gonna fall asleep. And then you wake up and it's four o'clock, right? So once we start weaning night feeds at night and once we get our little one sleeping in a crib, one of the rules in my program is no more laying down breastfeeding um, together because you're likely to fall asleep. And so instead, what you want to do, Liana, is you just want to sit up. That's basically like the easy answer, is you want to put yourself in a position, like literally a physical position, where you won't fall asleep. Um, that plus a clear plan on how you're going to wean down their night feeds will get you there. Your little one's six months old. 
you didn't tell me how many night feeds she has, but if you're interested in weaning them off or weaning, weaning them down or weaning off of them, then you can check out my weaning night feedings guide as well. You can find that on my website. So you're saying she turns around and settles herself. What you would do is you would just give her a feed, keeping her awake. And when you notice that she was starting to get drowsy, you would take her off the breast, give her a little burp, and then put her back in the crib. <laughs> Manessa, baby sleeping in the crib, and we've moved the bed away, but still in the room. I feel like a thief when going in at night. <laughs> and she's sleeping because you're creeping. Yeah, I know. So the thing about room sharing, like room sharing is great. A lot of parents room share out of necessity because they just don't have another bedroom. Or a lot of parents want to room share because they want to sleep close to their little one. So we still room share. My guy is going to be six months old really, really soon. And I, I love it. I definitely love it. I remember with my daughter, she was seven months when we moved her to her own bedroom because that's when we started sleep training. And we just... We kind of let it go so far that we just hit the wall. We just had to make all these changes. So with him, I'm much more conscious of it. I mean, it's such a different experience in so many ways. But I'm loving room sharing. And I, we don't plan to really move him out of the room just yet. He's going to need to share a bedroom with his sister. And so we talked about uh, sibling sharing bedrooms on Tuesday. And I really don't recommend it until your little one is at least like weaned off night feeds and sleeping through the night or usually like 12 months. So our goal really is 12 months. So we'll see how we go. So anyway, it depends on why you're room sharing. But Manessa, it, you're funny. It's like you feel like a thief because you're like tiptoeing in. So you have to play white noise. You have to play white noise because you guys will wake each other up. And then even if your little one's sleeping well and sleeping independently, you're still gonna wake each other up because you're gonna make noises. And baby's gonna sense you and hear you and vice versa. A lot of people say, I hate white noise or my husband hates white noise. He's just not cool with it. And I would just say like, it's proven to help people sleep deeper and longer. So my husband cannot stand white noise. He despises it. He wants a totally silent bedroom, which creeps me out. I like wake up all night because I'm like, it's so quiet in here. So he has relented for the time being because everything is temporary and he's wearing earplugs. So it's a win-win. I get to not wear earplugs, have white noise, which helps me sleep, but hear the baby. He wears white, he wears white noise. He wears earplugs. So, you know, when trying to maybe talk with your partner or even with you, just remember nothing is forever. And so if it's a temporary solution, I wouldn't suggest both parents wear earplugs. Um, we had a point where I was wearing like one earplug, like I just needed to block out some noise. You can kind of make it work. You can trade off. But if you're room sharing, I highly recommend uh, playing white noise and playing it loud enough to where you guys don't hear every little stir. Um, and if you have wooden floors, you know, and you're walking in like a thief and then creak, creak, and your baby's waking up, it's just not worth it. You're working so hard to get them sleeping well, you may as well play some white noise. Um, okay, that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> hey, Trey Cinco, good morning. Did you email me? To be fair, I don't think I've checked my emails yet today, but you should email me. Bearded Wonder, that's a great name. You might be my favorite Instagram name today. Hey, dad to a three-year-old here. Hey, dada. Our son wakes at 4 a.m. and will not, does not go back to sleep. Any advice? We black out the room and put to bed at 7. Yes, I got loads of advice for you. So last week, we did a whole week on early wakings. Um, so later in the week, I think it was Thursday and Friday, we talked specifically about toddlers or older kids. So definitely check out my post. And on my website, I have a guide. It's about toddlers, but you can totally apply it to a 3-year-old. Um, how to stop your toddler waking at 5 a.m. So go to Baby Seat Made Simple. Um... Find that guide. You can just do a search. And it's, you know, quite lengthy and it gives you lots of concrete tips that you can make sure you're doing to encourage your little one to sleep later in the morning. What I will say quickly is a three-year-old, if they still nap, should only nap for one hour because getting too much daytime sleep can make little ones wake up early in the morning. Maybe they fight bedtime. Maybe they wake up in the night. Some little ones don't. They fall asleep at bedtime. They sleep great. And then they just wake up at like four or five. So if your little one's napping more than an hour, that's an easy sort of thing you can tweak. And I know if you're like stuck at home with littles and especially if you're working or if you just need some downtime, a one hour nap is like, what, only one hour? Like I totally get it, but it's kind of like give and take. Um, but there's lots of other things, lots of other um, tips that I have in my guide. So check that out, Bearded Wonder, and let me know if you have any questions about it. Seven o'clock's a perfect bedtime. I would expect your little one to sleep till at least six. If they're not napping, they need 12 hours night's sleep. If they are napping, 11 to 12. D. Nina, baby's 13 months old and co-sleeping and nursing to sleep with a minimum of three night wakings. If I stop nursing to sleep and if she wakes up at night, should I nurse? 
or go cold turkey. Well, I recommend that what you do at bedtime, you also do during the night because it goes quicker. And your little one is 13 months old, so definitely old enough to learn how to sleep independently. So, um, I mean, if she's feeding minimum three times at night, it could be a bit of a shock to her system and to your breast, honestly. If you go cold turkey, it doesn't mean that it's not a good idea. It just means when you wake at night and you feel really full, and uncomfortable that you do need to pump to let the pressure off just to protect your supply and to prevent mastitis and probably for a 13 month old if they're feeding four let's just say four times a night i would probably wean down to one feed for just a few nights let everybody adapt and then wean off of that last feed did you drop it yeah did you drop it there you go there you go, there you go. but also if you're at the point where you're like i just can't do this anymore and i'm just gonna scream into a pillow all day if nothing's gonna change, you can certainly go cold turkey. Just take care of your breasts and have a plan. Like I said earlier, if you're making any big changes to your little one's sleep routine, have a clear plan so that during the night when they wake up and they're not happy with the changes that you're asking them to make, you know exactly what to do. You don't second get your guess yourself. You don't cave and give in, which just kicks the can down the road to tomorrow night when you're gonna to try to start over. So have a clear plan, um, D Nina. Yeah, so I would just say whatever you do at bedtime, definitely do it during the night as well. Talk to your little one, let them know before bedtime, like what's gonna happen. I'm gonna cuddle you at the night if you wake up, but you know, the boobies have gone to sleep. Night, night, she can kiss them good night when she goes to bed. Like, you know, put plant this in her head before she goes to sleep and do it every day. And then lots of cuddles and praise and love, even if she didn't go perfectly at night, but just telling her how great she's doing and she's such a big girl, you know, it goes a long, long, long way. Um, good luck to you. Ah, mama sta yovo. What was it? Mommy, what's that? I think is what it means. Yes, it's possible. We street trained our older little one while we were still in the same bedroom. There you go. Do you want to come say hi? <laughs> well done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okie dokie. Let's see what you have to say on the subject, huh? Yeah, so well done, Mama Stayevo. It can totally be done. So parents will even hang like a um, curtain or position the crib where their little one can't look directly through the crib bars right at mommy. You know, you can get creative. Miss Jen, I co-sleep. My, my almost nine-month-old wakes up two to three times a night to eat. How can I stop that and get her in the crib? Some naps she'll sleep in the crib, but she won't for nighttime. So that's good that she's sleeping some naps in the crib. It's she's at least used to it. She's familiar with the crib and it gives you confidence that she can do it. So remember that. Um, I really like to night wean and to sleep train at the same time. Excuse you. Normally my approach is to take all the essential steps of sleep training and to separate them out and do them one by one. So it's a gentler transition for you and your little one. One of the exceptions is night weaning because it's like this. Let's say I have this baby right here and let's say he feeds four times at night and let's say that I say, okay, that's it. No more feeding at night. You're old enough. If I don't teach him how to fall asleep on his own, then I'll just have to settle him to sleep another way. I'll have to rock him to sleep. I'll have to hold him to sleep. I'll have to pat him, shush him, sing, do something to help him. Now, if I could do that for five minutes and he would fall back asleep for a nice amount of time, that would be fine. But more than likely, it's not what happens. You either take just as long settling your little one in a different way or even longer because they're like, hold on, I've sucked to sleep like for the last six months straight and now you want to rock me or now you want to hold me. And usually they fight for longer. So suddenly you're up longer in the night and your little one's crying more. So it's not such a gentle transition. So that's why I, in my program, 21 Days to Peace and Quiet, we night wean and we sleep train at the same time because I believe that when you teach your little one the skill of settling themselves to sleep, then when you're also asking them to wean down their night feeds, you're giving them a skill and here's how you can fall back asleep on your own. I hope that makes sense. I hope I explained it well. So Ms. Jen, what I would say for you is if your little one is almost nine months old, they definitely, yeah, they're older than you. And they definitely have the ability to learn to settle themselves to sleep and sleep long stretches at night. Most nine month olds, assuming they're eating well, gaining weight, can sleep all night without needing to feed, or you can hold on to one night feed, whatever you want. Um, what I would say for, I mean, it kind of depends. You could certainly do the quick method here on this graphic, or you could do the gradual method, but for sure, there's like, a, sorry, there's this little spider going up and down. I didn't know I had one in my office going up and down on a spider web and he's like totally distracted me. 
Um, anyway, I'm so easily distracted, sorry. So what I would say is, I mean, basically it sounds like you're ready, you're ready to sleep train. So just find a method that you feel would suit your little one best, one that you can stay committed to, have a clear plan for it and go for it. And you'll be amazed at the progress that you can make. Like today's Thursday, next Thursday, like let's say you started tomorrow, you'll be amazed with how far you can come. Your little one can be in the crib, your little one can be falling asleep independently and sleeping really long stretches at night, if not through the night. So I believe you're ready to start sleep training. Good luck to you, let me know if you want some help. V, my 13 month old falls asleep with us. We put him in his crib when he falls asleep but he wakes up two hours later and he won't fall back asleep unless he comes back into our bed. Yes, so this is a common struggle for parents. It's easy enough to get your little one in the crib at bedtime because again, bedtime is the time of the day where your little one is the most tired. So when they fall asleep at bedtime, they're out. The first half of the night is typically deeper sleep than the second half of the night. Our little ones stir more often in the second half of the night. It's why we often see more night wakings from let's say 1 a.m. through to um, morning wake up. So what I would say for UV is also sleep training will solve this problem for you because you help your little guy fall asleep in your bed at bedtime, right? And then he easily goes into the crib, but he's already gotten a few hours of sleep so that he's a little bit less tired the next time he wakes up and he's going to wake up every time he places his body down in the crib. Once you can teach him to sleep independently, to fall asleep on his own in the crib, then this won't be a problem because he'll be comfortable in the crib. He won't fuss, he won't fight it because this is where he sleeps. I don't mean to make it sound so simplistic, um, but if you're really struggling with a 13 month old, you know, and after two hours he kicks up a fuss every time you try to have him sleep anywhere other than the crib, really and truly, sleep training can solve this for your little one. And he's definitely at the age where he can learn to sleep in the crib all night long. So, it sounds like you're already kind of doing a bit of the gradual method. I would probably just say to go ahead and find a sleep training method that you think sounds like something that you could stick to and then go with that. Okay, I hope that helped. I'm not sure if it did. What soothing techniques do you recommend? Again, that's like picking a sleep training method. Oh, there's that spider. So it, it um, I mean, it depends. Do you know what I mean? If you want, you can go back two, maybe three weeks ago. If you look on my Instagram page, you'll see a graphic and it's called sleep training methods explained. And so I walk you through some of the common sleep training methods and it gives specifics of the hands-on soothing that you use with each method. And maybe you can have a look at that and say, okay, this one seems like something realistic that I could actually do. So have a look at that. If you have any questions, you can send me a DM. Jess777, seven, seven, seven. during training, is it okay to leave baby in the bed during the nap when he wakes up after 40 minutes? He does this and then falls back asleep after 20, 30 minutes, three and a half months old. Yes, yeah, totally fine. Yeah. It's totally fine. If he's happy, is he happy for those 20 minutes? If he's happy and just kind of hanging out or just doing a little bit of like ee, 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 you can totally leave him. This is encouraging him to resettle himself back to sleep. It's encouraging him to sleep independently and he's young. However, if he's not upset, then it's totally fine. Um, there's no problem with it at all. I think you should go for it. Alex, thank you so much for your fantastic advice and resources, Julie. Oh, that's so nice of you. Thank you. Any tips on getting baby to sleep in the crib during the day? She's four and a half months and does this fine at night. Oh, good. And settles herself with, there you go. Four and a half months, self settles at night, but won't go in the cot during the day. Yeah. So let me go back to your first message. Naps for babies younger than six months can be quite unpredictable and we can't really expect a terrible amount of um, consistency from them, to be honest. Our only goals for a four month old's naps are that they nap every hour and a half to two and a half hours throughout the day. So those are your awake times, 1.5 to 2.5 hours. And they nap for about three to four total hours during the day. So if you add all their naps together, they should get a minimum of three hours, but up to four hours, maybe four and a half. That's really all we can aim for. A four month old might be napping four times a day. Yeah, you were just there last month. You have a lot to say. They could be napping five times a day. So you could drive yourself bonkers if you're trying to get your four month old to sleep in a crib four times a day. Trust me, I've been there. <laughs> so I believe that it is okay to help young babies nap. I believe it's fine if you wanna wear your baby in the carrier for a nap. I believe it's fine if you want to put them in the stroller and go for a nice long walk outside. If 
you can these days. As long as you're supervising your baby while they're sleeping, it's totally fine and it's a great way for them to have a good nap and usually to have a nice long nap. Motion and being close to parents usually helps young babies extend their naps to like an hour, excuse me, maybe even a little bit more. So Alex, what I would say to you is the first nap of the day is usually the easiest one to make changes with. So if your baby wakes up in the morning, let's say 7 a.m., just remember at four months old, the first awake time of the day typically is one and a half hours. That's it. You like hang out in bed for a while, you make yourself a coffee, you might have breakfast, and you're like, what, you need a nap again? I haven't even gotten out of my pajamas. Like, I get it, but that is usually the awake times that a four month old wants. So make sure that they are, you're aiming for them to be asleep at the one and a half hour mark. And do, if you wanna to try to have them, have them have a crib nap, try it for the first one of the day. So if they wake up at seven, then at 8.20, I would go in the room, I would change a diaper, put him right back in the sleep sack that he was just in, and then try to get him settling himself to sleep in the crib for the first nap. Um, you probably fed him when he woke up, so I don't think you have to feed him again, really. You could, you could. You could feed him like 15 minutes before he's due to fall asleep, just a top-up feed. Um, but that's what I would do. I would not try for the other naps of the day just yet because it's hard to gauge exactly when your little one's ready for a nap, and it is really hard. And maybe you're missing his sleepy signs during the day, which is totally understandable. Maybe your awake times are a little bit off, totally understandable. So you're, you're not like... It's a good figure of speech for this. It's like you haven't set you haven't set the stage yet, so it's easier to fail because you haven't. I'm just gonna push this a little bit. It can be harder to sort out naps. So I would try for the first step of the day, and for the other naps, I'd be like, it's okay. I'm gonna wear him in the carrier, or we're gonna go for a stroll, or I'll try the crib, and I'll just accept the fact that he may only sleep for about 45 minutes there, or maybe even 30 minutes. Um, but well done getting your little one self settling to sleep and sleeping in the crib all night. Focus on that. Focus on the, the fact that you've achieved that at a young age and just know by six to seven months, you can ex expect a lot more out of your little one's naps. And I'm sure you have seen my four month old sleep guys, but I do have some on my website. Oh good, Holly's relieved. Oh, I love helping a parent feel relieved. D, Nina, my baby also wakes up early between four to six. I think a wet diaper bothers her too, along with wanting to nurse to sleep. Should I change her diaper before she wakes up? I would not change her diaper before she wakes up because you're probably going to wake her up. If you know you're gonna feed your little one at that time, you could do a very gentle diaper change. Um, so you could just try to go like smoothly, get the diaper change and then feed them if you know, but always change the diaper before the feed. Um, but I would not change it while they're asleep if you don't wanna wake them because chances are you will wake her. That's just how it goes. Relusha, what would you suggest for a 16 month old suddenly waking at 4.50 a.m.? Won't get back to sleep even with a feed. We're trying a 6.45 bedtime and he naps for two hours. Should he be going to bed even earlier? Well, it depends on the times. So this is what I'll say. Um, I assume you're on one nap a day and that's a two hour nap. If you're not, if you're on two naps a day, then wean down to one nap, because that could be the problem. If you're on one nap a day, that's two hours, that's perfect. It could even go up to three hours. You don't have to wake them until the three hour mark. And you want to have a wake times of about four and a half to five hours. So I would, if your little one's waking up at five o'clock suddenly, so it'd have to be like a good week or so. Like if it's just one day or two, it could just be something random and hopefully it will pass. I have a toddler's waking at 5 a.m. guide on my website, so please, check that out because I'm, I'm, I may forget to say one or two of the tips that are in there. Um, but I was, so they're waking up at five and 11 o'clock is a six hour awake time. I'd probably go for a nap. I don't know what time your little one's napping. I'd go for a nap between 10 and 10.30 in the morning. And I would aim for that nap to actually be up to three hours. Um, and then I would put my little one down super early, probably six o'clock. Um, because what happens is if we have too long awake times during the day, it can cause our little one to wake up early in the morning, which seems really, really weird, but I promise you it's true. You should go to last week's, um, my, all of my Instagram posts are about early waking. So if you missed some of those, we talked about toddlers <laughs> late in the week. So make sure to check that out. I'm laughing because when he, when he feeds, he wants to have the breast in his hand and his finger. <laughs> I'm like, that doesn't work. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. You trying to whistle? Um, I'm sorry, really shocked, distracted. So definitely two things. Check out my 
Toddlers Waking Early Guide on my website, babieslaymadesimple.com, and also look at last week's post because they give specific tips for toddlers waking early. Um, you could also look at my guide on how to transition to one nap because I'm assuming you have transitioned really, relatively recently or you haven't yet. So the tips in that guide are really specific to what time that nap should be and that can really make a big difference with early wakings. So check out those guides. You get a little bit of homework to do, but they're gonna give you much better advice than I'm doing right now. And it's going to be a lot clearer. You may have to move bedtime early and you're probably thinking six o'clock bedtime, you're crazy. Like my baby's gonna wake up at four in the morning, but they won't, I promise you. If you get awake times right, it helps your little one stay well rested and wake up later in the morning. You you think I'm insane? I know you do, because I thought I was it was insane when I first realized this too. But I promise you, it's true. Okay, good luck to you. R. G. Hakes, my three and a half month old only sleeps if he's held. But we're gonna talk about this really soon. Hopefully next week. Won't even sleep next to me in the bed. Uh, Merlin hasn't helped. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Can I try a quick method? What do I do when he wakes up every hour? Yeah, you can do whatever you need to do if you're dying. Because I mean, holding a baby all night means you're not sleeping. You know it's not safe. I'm not going to make you feel guilty because we've all been there. But it's not safe and you're not sleeping. And so if you want a quick method, you can definitely utilize a quick method. I mean, your little one's young. I normally don't like sleep training until five months. But many, many baby sleep consultants are okay at four months. So what you could do is... Yeah, you could do the quick method, but like not necessarily aim to totally sleep train him, but just aim to get him in the crib. Um... And so what do you do when he wakes up every hour? You give him a cuddle, maybe you feed him, you know, he's still young, but then you just put him back in the crib. And if you take your bed off the menu for several nights in a row, your little one will get used to it. The thing about this type of method is you can't give in. Like you can't just say, I can't take this and put him back in your bed. Cause then it's like all your hard work was for nothing. You know what I mean? Um, so I feel for you, I really, really do. Um, I wish your little one was a little bit older, but it doesn't mean that all hope is lost. Check out my three month old sleep guides. I have a few, I have three month old sleep problems and solutions. Um, check that one out first and I also have a three month old sleep schedule. If you tweak a little bit of the, like the daytime or wait times um, and some other tips I have in these guides, it could help your little one sleep longer stretches at night. So then he won't wake up every hour. Do you know what I mean? And if he's waking up every three or four hours and you're working on getting him in the crib, like you, you'll have more resolve. You won't be so exhausted. So check those out, but you can certainly, if you want to do a quick method because you just can't take it, then just say, that's it. You're sleeping in your crib no matter what. And just know the next two nights are going to suck, but he will get the hang of it. Um, okay, good luck to you. And please check out my three-month-old sleep guides. Deuces. My, hi, Jilly. My toddler is 18 months and night weaned, but we're still co-sleeping. Any advice on transitioning to sleep in the crib? She's been crib resistant since birth with epic meltdowns. Anytime a parent says epic meltdowns, I know they mean it. Well, first of all, well done night weaning. You're halfway there. All you have to do is get your little one used to sleeping in the crib. So we're going to talk more about toddlers. Um, oh, goodness. You are just a little wreck. Okay. There you go. We're going to talk about toddlers transitioning out of co-sleeping. Um if we don't do it tomorrow, we're going to do it early next week. So I'm going to have more specific tips for you then. Uh, deuces. I mean, basically, your little one's 18 months. So 18 months is kind of my cutoff where it's like, if they're younger than 18 months, we should definitely aim to get them in the crib. If they're older than 18 months, we have to see. So your little one has never, yeah, she's been in crib resistance since birth. I mean, I really don't love putting anyone that's younger than two and a half years into a crib. But what you need to do is you have to make sure if you have a crib, you have to make sure she can't climb out of it because I don't want you to do all this work to get her into the crib and then two weeks later discover she can climb out of it. So when you're gauging, because you're right at that cutoff age, when you're gauging, are we going to go for a crib or are we going to go for, oh my God, it's other bed, um, then I would have the crib set up and put your little one in there during the day with her toys, you know, just, and you're not asking her to sleep and just watch her. If she's super athletic, super physical and is showing signs of already trying to get the heck out of there and climb. If so, then you probably need to transition to a toddler bed, which we're going to talk about in a few days. If not, like my daughter didn't, she didn't climb out of the crib, certainly not at 18 months, then you can definitely aim to get your little one in the crib. We're going to talk about this more, um, but basically you have to do a lot of communication. You have to do a lot of hype 
with it and usually taking like depending on your little one's adaptability taking several days to even a week where you sort of like write the script and talk about the script with your little one it really get them excited because you're going to be moving them i guess to a new bedroom unless the crib's going to be in your room i mean you could start off in your room at first for a gentle transition but if they're going to be in a new bedroom you got to hype up the bedroom you got to spend time there you got to hype up the bed there's so much like groundwork you have to set a stage for this so you can start working on that now and then when my tips come out really soon um, we can talk about it again but when we're talking about toddlers there's a lot of communication um, and expectations that go into sleep training as well we don't just kind of start with a toddler on night one without having forewarned them because they don't like that um yeah, so maybe you can kind of figure out based on what I've just talked about, and then you can join me in a few days when we talk about toddlers transitioning out of co-sleeping. Sorry, I don't have the answers ready for you right now. Ladybug Lily. Hi, the other day I asked you about my daughter, who's nine months old, and six weeks ago she stopped sleeping through the night, and I didn't realize until it was too late that she was nursing to sleep. I asked what I should do, and you mentioned that she just needed a sleep training touch-up and to do whatever I had done the first time and that it would be faster. But here's the thing. She did it by herself the first time. Ah, uh, yeah, I think you told me that. We didn't train her at all. So how do I go about picking one? For the record, she's usually a good napper. Okay, let me go back to your first message. I don't lose my spot. Well, I mean, that's phenomenal that she taught herself to sleep through the night before. So basically, that's not going to really help you because you didn't choose a method. So now it's just time to choose a method. So she's nine months old. Um... It depends on her temperament, really. If you go back to two, maybe three weeks ago, I have a graphic on my Instagram page called Sleep Training Methods Explained. It talk about, talks about your baby's age. It talks about their temperament. And based on those two factors, it gives you recommendations for a sleep training method. So have a look at that, and maybe it'll say Ferber for you, or maybe it'll say Camping Out, or you know Picking Up and Putting Down. And then you can do some research on that method and like read through what it involves and go, oh, yeah, I think this could really work for her. And then basically you just kind of have to start sleep training now. If you'd like more help than that, if you'd like me to help you do it or a step-by-step -step plan um, of one of these methods, then you can join us in 21 Days to Peace and Quiet. Um, it's amazing that she slept through the night before, but our little ones can change as they grow up, and you just may have to show her actively, okay, this is how we're going to get you sleeping through the night again. This is how I'm going to encourage you to go back to independent sleeping. You may have to just officially start sleep training now. But check out that graphic. It's gonna give you some information. Read the post. Um, it gives you information on which method might be best suited for your little one, and then you can go from there. You can contact me if you want some help or whatever you decide to do. I hope that helps. Nali, how do we know we've succeeded in sleep training? Does it mean completely no crying or resistance when put down awake at bedtime? That's a really good question. It's really up to you. I mean. Oh my goodness. When I first started, so when I first started Baby Sleep Made Simple, I was like, every single parent wants their baby to sleep 12 hours straight at night. And I was so wrong because what I discovered when working with my first clients is like, they would write me and go, oh my gosh, we're down to one night feed. We're so happy. Thank you. We're done. I was like, oh, okay, cool. Or they would say, you know, my little one is sleep trained. We're doing amazing sleeps through the night. Still cries a bit at bedtime, but it's all good. Or even, I was really surprised when parents would wean from five feeds down to two feeds. And they were like, we're great, you know, at this point with our toddler. So what I discovered is it really depends on your goals. And it really depends on what you want. I don't think any parent wants their little one to cry at bedtime. But what I will say is, if you're happy with their night sleep, just know that if they're crying at bedtime, and it's like 10 or 15 minutes or less consistently, then this is just a byproduct of sleep training and it will stop. It'll stop in two to three weeks max, as long as you're consistent with bedtime, consistent with their sleep routine. You don't kind of do intermittent um, periods of helping them to sleep. You say super consistent, it, they will stop. It's just like they've learned how to fall asleep this way. It's gonna take time for them to fall asleep quietly. If the crying is like a half hour, if it's like an hour one night, 10 minutes the next night, 45 minutes, if it's fluctuating and it's longer than like 20 minutes every single night, it could be a timing issue. So have a look at your awake times. Make sure your little one's well napped during the day. Um, make sure you're kind of following all the age appropriate recommendations, um, which you can find on my website if you go there and click your little one's age in the top menu. Um, but I will say, I think I've only worked with one client, honestly, who really struggled with their baby crying at bedtime long term. And again, it was only for five to 10 minutes, but it was more than three weeks. 
it eventually did stop, but it just took longer. The rest of them by far was one to three weeks, I would say. Um, but don't feel like you're a failure if your little one cries at bedtime for five minutes and then sleeps through the night. Remember where you started and how far you've come and just stay super consistent and the crying will stop. I know it's not easy to listen to, but I promise it will get better. Good questions. This is packing. <laughs> What sleep, training, what sleep training method works for a two-month-old? That's a really good question. Okay, well, the short answer is check out my two-month-old sleep guide on my website because it has lots of specific sleep tips that you can implement to get your two-month-old sleeping well. But as far as, like, official sleep training, like encouraging your two-month-old to go into the crib awake and to sleep really long periods at night on their own, I don't really promote that because I've found that either your two-month-old can self-settle or they can't. And if they can't, there's nothing wrong with them. They're just not old enough. And so what I prefer to do instead of pushing that on them is just really give them an age appropriate sleep routine. Make sure they stay really well rested because when a baby's well rested and we're following their cues, they, and they're only two months old and we know we have to expect like two night feeds out of them, maybe three, then parents are like, oh, I can deal with this. It's the not knowing, right? Or it's the unpredictability. It's he ate eight times last night and only two nights, the not two times the night before. When you know what you can expect and when you know how to set a consistent sleep routine that's age appropriate for your little one, that, I mean, some parents may call that sleep training, um, but you can come a long way with that. If you're really looking for independent sleep, you could look into it like there's a method called like the shush pat. I don't have that method in my program, but you could certainly do some research on that. And it's really just putting your little one in the crib and shushing them and patting them until they fall asleep and just doing that every time until they get used to it. And then weaning off your hands on support. Um, so you could check that out. But basically the best sleep training method if you really wanted to do it is a super gradual and gentle one with lots of hands on help. And knowing that some two month olds can't learn to settle themselves to sleep. But check out my two month old sleep guide for sure. Yes, by chance do you have a link of where to find the sleep training methods recommended per age? Yes. Can you DM me? Because <laughs> I'm holding a baby right now. After this is over, V. Alman, if you DM me and say, can you link me to your post on sleep training methods, me and my team will see that because we can go into the individual post on Instagram and we can send it to you. So DM me when this call is done and me or Alyssa or Paniota will help you out. Okay. All right. Well, listen, we only have a few more minutes. Well, you could use your teething toy. Do you see your teething toy? Can you see this? Do you see that? Do you see that? There you go. Do you want to hold that for a minute? I got him all these teething rings and toys at Target. And then my good friend, who's a mom of three, bought him this one. Can I just show them? Can I show them? Let me show them. Okay, no. But anyway, I'll show you when he drops it. Um, and it's like the only one he wants. I have to make sure it's always clean. It's always around. Let me show him. I don't even know what brand it is. This little monkey right here. Because you can open it and he can hold it. It's so well made. He can hold it at like any angle. And he puts this part in his mouth. And then he puts this part. It's genius. There's no brand on it. Oh, but there is. Skip Hop. My guy loves it. <laughs> if you're looking for a TV toy. Sometimes I put it in the fridge. But I really, he doesn't really seem to care. But all these other TV toys, he's just not into. He wants his Skip Hop. Okay. Um, okay, next question. Maria. Maria Sanz, two month old, inconsistent naps. He can nap for 20 minutes, wake up, and still be tired. Yeah, I feel you. When I pick him up and rock him, he will fall asleep again. How do I make naps longer? Maria, check out my two month old sleep guide. I have lots of specific tips to help you get as much consistency as possible, um, given the fact that you have a two month old out of their naps. It's all about watching the awake times and just having them sleep as often as they need. Also, it's not uncommon for a young baby to wake up after one sleep cycle, which is usually like around the 40 to 45 minute mark, but sometimes it could be earlier. And then if you can go in and within five to 10 minutes, get them back to sleep, then that's an okay thing to be doing at this point as well. But my two month old sleep bed has specific uh, tips on this for you. So please go check that out. Babysleepmadesimple.com and you can click the top menu for the newborn to three months and you'll see it in there. V, I'm going to butcher your name. I'm sorry. Vietha, Vietha, Vietha. I'm currently sleep training my daughter, my daughter, and also I have to put her in her own crib. She did great for four days. Since yesterday, her naps reduced to 30 minutes and she started waking up every two hours. Please help. Well, I don't know how old she is. So what I would say is if you go to my website, let me see. Did you? 
Yeah, she's asking for more feedings for a couple of days. I don't know what's going on. Maybe she's going through a growth spurt. I don't know how old she is, but go to my website, click the top menu, find your baby's age. It's gonna give you specific tips um, that you can incorporate with sleep training to help your little one um, sleep better and not start waking up so much at night. I mean, if you've been super, super consistent, like 100% consistent with your sleep training plan, and suddenly you're dealing with a lot more wakings, it could be a growth spurt, it could be a regression. Um, there can also be what's called an extinction burst. So when you're doing sleep training, like night one's not great, night two is better, but some parents find on night three and four, it's like, what the heck just happened? It's like we're starting back at square one. This is a totally normal occurrence uh, when you're doing behavior modification with kids, basically, which is what sleep training is. So you just push through, you stick to your steps, and then you see a big improvement by nights four and five. Um, so it depends on kind of what's going on, but check out the age appropriate sleep guide. Make sure you stick into your plan 100% every single night. Any backtracking or kind of giving up will set you back for sure. And make sure you feed your little one even more often or a bigger amount during the day because maybe she's going through a growth spurt. All right, are we gonna have to end this call? Are you gonna have to end this call? Hi, can you say hi? You like that little baby on the graphic? You like that little baby? Yeah, yeah. Okay, guys. Um, oh, good be of interest. We'd love to have you join us. Bearded Wonder does nap sometimes for an hour, but doesn't at nursery. Ah, okay. Well, then definitely, I don't know if be Bearded Wonder is if you're still on here, but if your little one's not napping, they need 12 hours of solid nighttime sleep at three years old. Um, tweaking bedtime to make that happen can dramatically improve early wakings as well. So make sure to check out my early waking guide. Okay, I'm gonna do one more question from Kara. We go back and forth with co-sleeping and room sharing. She was co-sleeping, then for about a month she was back in the travel crib beside me and I was starting to move her away. But then I think we got an early form of regression and she's back in bed with us after the initial stretch. Do I need to bring the travel crib back up beside me and move it slowly again? Well, that's up to you. That's up to you. I mean, it, it depends on you, really. If you're like, I just need to get this done, then do the quick method and begin sleep training. But if you're like, no, I have a little bit of energy, I'd rather do a gradual transition to get her used to it, then you can do the gradual. I mean, I'm just gonna put it back onto you because it kind of depends. With my daughter, I had hit the wall so hard that I had to make changes, do you know what I mean? But like, maybe other parents are like, no, we, we prefer the, the gradual method. Okay, guys, sorry. If you don't want to get the travel crib back up, if you just want to start her in her own bedroom, then you can do that. 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 <laughs> he just wants to eat me. He actually tries to eat my lens. All right, guys. Sorry, I'm going to end it a little bit soon, but we still got to chat for quite a while. Um, I hope this helped you, give you some ideas of how you can do the transition from co-sleeping to crib. Uh, if you have any questions, you guys can DM me. There's no live call tomorrow, but I'll see you guys back next week. Ah, thank you for the hearts. We'll see you back next week. Hopefully my garden will be totally renovated. Um, and I will have daddy be able to help. Yeah, daddy will be able to help then. Right? 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 Um, okay, guys, take care. I uh, hope you have a great weekend. And we will speak soon. All right, bye, guys.